guys, welcome back to Engineers and Friends. My name is Mike. Today we're gonna to be talking all things violin, how to mic it and how to process it so it sounds good when you record it. Hey guys, welcome back to Engineers and Friends. My name is Mike and today we're gonna to be talking all things violin, how to mic it, what kind of mics to use, that moment you're trying to do a video and your roommate decides to vacuum. Hey guys, welcome back to Engineers and Friends. My name is Mike. Today we're gonna to be talking about the violin, how to record it and how to process it. Let's get started. So the piece that we're gonna to use today is called the Ashkin Farewell. I've been playing it for most of my life. It's one of my favorite violin pieces of all time. Fun fact, I used it to audition to get into West Virginia University's orchestra way back when. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is put some piano down so I have something to play with. Okay, so the signal path that we're going to be using, we're going to be going with the Neumann KM184. That's a small diaphragm condenser. It's going to be hanging overhead. You'll see its position. Um, keep in mind, when you mic a violin, if you mic it too close, it's going to sound very scratchy. It's going to pick up a lot of that bow interacting with the string. If you mic it too far away, it's going to sound too roomy. So you got to find that Goldilocks zone, that, that right spot, just in the right spot, and you'll get a really nice violin sound that we're all used to hearing on records. Okay, so we're going from the Neumann KM184 right into the Apollo, and we're going to be em emulating a UA610A uh, preamp. That's a tube preamp, and it'll give the violin a nice buttery smooth sound. Okay, so that was a lot of fun, and this concludes the performance slash recording part of this. Quick note, the microphone wasn't pointed directly at where the bow is making contact with the strings. It was pointed more at the base of the fingerboard. I just find that by pointing the microphone there, that it gets a little bit more of a softer sound, which for a song like this is what you want. Now for some more country style stuff or stuff that needs to have a little bit more energy, you might consider pointing that microphone directly at where the bow is uh, making contact. Again, there's a million ways to do this. This is just how I do it. So let's get into the processing part of all this. Okay, so the very next thing that we're gonna do is apply a little bit of verb and delay to the recording that we just made. So for the reverb, I'm using Valhalla. It's an amazing reverb. If you don't have it or have never heard of it, check it out. Go to their website. It's cheap and it's like the best reverb I've ever heard. There's not one source that it doesn't work on. Um, and then we're going to be using H delay, which is the same thing. It, it's just an amazing delay. It works on everything, comes with a lot of waves bundles. I'm also not applying the verb or the delay to the track itself. I'm going to be creating a send track to apply these effects. The reason why I'm doing this before I comp is because I want to be able to hear the violin as I'm going to hear it in the track so that I can make decisions properly. Okay, let's get the comping.
three hours later. So step four in the process is to add a little bit of compression and EQ. So for the compressors, I'm actually gonna use two and I'm gonna kinda let the 11 set the WA76, it's 1176 kind of emulation or clone. Uh, I'm gonna let it do just a little bit of initial kiss on the track itself. And then the WA2A, which is a clone of the LA2A, um, is gonna do a little bit more of the heavy lifting. From there, it's gonna go over to my EQP WA, basically a tube EQ, um, and then it's gonna come back into the system. So let's take a look at um, how this sounds. <laughs> Okay, so the next step in this whole chain is actually with the piano itself. To get it to sound a little bit more organic, I'm actually going to break apart the low end from the top end and then pan them slightly. So let's get on that. So the last thing that I'm going to do is apply a couple things to the mix bus or the two bus it's sometimes called. So I'm going to do a tape emulation on there and then I'm going to give it a little bit of compression. Okay, so a quick recap of what we did today. We recorded the violin using a Neumann KM-184. We processed that recording with a little bit of verb and a little bit of delay. Then we comped it. We sent all of that through a, a pair of compressors, the WA-76, and then finished off with the WA-2A. And then we shot over to a 2BQ using the EQP WA, gave it a little bit of depth. Um, we mixed it with the piano. We threw a little bit of two bus or mix bus compression and tape emulation on there, finished it off with a limiter for some volume, and there you have it. So um, could the performance been better? Yes, but I just wanted to give you kind of the breakdown of how I record violins, how I process violins for my projects. And I, I do a lot of violin work for clients and um, this is one of my favorite things to do. Are there other ways that I do things? Absolutely. But just for a song like this, I wanted to go for that smooth kind of buttery violin sound mixed with a very organic, beautiful uh, piano sound. All right, so now that it's all done, let's check it out. <laughs> 